You are listening to the 8% Nation podcast, created to help you become a top producer in the insurance industry. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the 8% Nation podcast, where we're dedicated for help to help you get in the 8% of the insurance agents in the country, because 92% of insurance agents fail, and we don't want you to be a part of that statistic. Cody, that is a sad statistic. I've got a gentleman with us today by the name of Anthony Tolliver. Anthony, say hi to the people. Hey, everybody. How you guys doing? Hey, let me give Anthony a quick intro. You don't know Anthony, but I know Anthony well. Please, please. We went to, Anthony, I think we went to middle school together, not elementary though, correct? Is that correct? You went to Cherokee out of Cherokee? Um, (laughs) So we know each other since we were, sheesh, in eighth grade, seventh grade. And uh, now he's a 14-year NBA veteran, uh, currently playing for the Portland Trailblazers. Um, and he is going to give some breakdowns of how he's been able to stay in the, not just the 8%, but the 0.0008% of athletes, because there ain't no harder place to stay than on an NBA roster. Would you agree with that, Anthony? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I would say that that's pretty accurate. Right on, man. Well, hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, What I hope to do is uh, just kind of really introduce you to the folks and also You know, the insurance industry is highly competitive. It's highly Mm. performance driven. It's highly discipline focused. Those that have a lot of the attributes that athletes have find a lot of the same success in the in the business world. But but more importantly, the insurance industry, because it's so competitive. So, dude, thanks for joining us, Um, man. I have you down for 14 year NBA vet. You've played in 664 games in the NBA. Uh, your career three point percentage is at thirty seven percent as a, as a six foot nine or ten whatever you are um, you know stretch four which is a very rare you know commodity in the NBA Amazing. you've been to the playoffs three times your overall field goal percentage is forty three percent and you broke the Detroit Pistons all time three point percentage in a single season dude that's incredible roster or a, a resume you got man yeah appreciate it man uh, you know took took a lot of hard work. But, uh, you know, definitely, uh, you know, just just continue to work and, and made sure that you know, I put myself in a position to win. So, uh, you know, just continue to uh, continue to take advantage of opportunities that I've gotten and uh, been very fortunate and blessed to, uh, to do what I do for a living. Dude, you've said the word work multiple times already, which is awesome because it's what, what you've been able to do, and, and like Landon said, be able to stay in this NBA career, you know, I mean, people don't understand, and I'm, and that's why I'm super excited about this interview, is I'm looking forward for you, you know, to be able to share the personal development, the self-discipline, the mental side of being an athlete in the NBA, but also in the mental side and, and discipline that, that is involved in business. And, and I'm excited to hear what insurance agents can also do and learn and, and plug into to just be able to reach their full potential like you have. So, dude, I'm, 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 I'm jacked, man. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah, yeah. And then not only that, dude, you, you, not only are you a 14-year NBA vet, um, you also have, you know, several extremely successful businesses in real estate. And, I mean, can I say multi-million dollar businesses as well? I mean, from my understanding, based on our conversations, um, I mean, you're, I mean, by the time, you know, you end up hanging up the NBA career, you're going to have your, your future already set from a business side too. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've taken it very seriously to set myself up, uh, to, to do some, some incredible things after I'm done with basketball. Um, you know, basketball has uh, you know, given me the opportunity to, um, do a lot of fun things, a lot of great things and develop a lot of great relationships um, over the years. Um, and, you know, for me, it's just been about taking advantage of those opportunities and those relationships and uh, being able to, uh, you know, start a lot of these businesses and stuff while I'm playing um, so that, just like you said, as soon as I'm done, it would be, you know, step right into uh, some leadership roles within some of these businesses that uh, I'm a part of right now. And, um, you know, at the same time, just getting a lot of education on uh, the ins and outs of startups and just in general business and growing a business, how to do it, um, you know, while I'm still playing. So then when I'm done, you know, just all the education will go into uh, me being able to, to do this, you know, myself after I'm done, but with whatever business I'm a part of. That's awesome, man. Where do you find time, man? Like, that's just... Uh, 
you have to be really good at multitasking. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, like I told you guys on the phone a little bit ago, uh, was leaving practice. Um, I'm at the uh, Safe Light uh, Auto Repair right now to get my windshield fixed while doing the podcast, right? And, uh, <laughs> and in between all that, I had to time, find time to get some food, right? And as soon as I leave here, I'm going to go pick up my, my daughter from school and then, you know, then probably go on a date with my wife tonight, you know? So it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's, 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 it's it, some days get pretty, pretty full. Um, but, you know, I just try and make sure that I, I keep the most important things first. And, um, you know, I'm a man of faith. So, uh, you know, that's something that I lean on a lot and that I put first and, and that, that also in turn turns into me putting my wife first and then my kids after that. And, uh, and then, you know, kind of everything else just falls into place. Wow. Good stuff. Huh? I told you he's a good dude. Dude, no doubt. That's all. Awesome. Hey, so let's get into it, man. Um, so what I would like to break down real quick is, is, you know, being a, uh, a 14 year NBA veteran and being a part of a highly competitive environment you know, how have you learned, you know, that's a lot, not a lot of people last, you know, in the NBA. I, what, what have you learned that has separated the, the guys that, you know, peel out of the NBA that can't handle it? Like, what have you done to, to stay relevant, to stay competitive, to stay on a roster for this long, man? Well, what are some secrets we can kind of uh, glean from you, buddy? Uh, I would say a couple things. Uh, one thing is uh, you, you mentioned relevancy. Uh, you know, I've, tr I've tried to stay on top of the game uh, uh, on the business side, but also more importantly, just on how the game is going, like the trends, um, the things that are that are popular um, within the game and where the teams are going with it. And I've just tried to make sure that my game fit that um, and, and everything else and, uh, and just stay consistent. So, you know, for me, um, <clears throat> my off seasons are – everything uh most a lot of guys not i don't want to say most but a lot of guys um you know they take the off season off and kind of hang out and go on vacation and, and all that stuff and, and I, I still have fun i still have time for my family and we still do our vacation stuff but uh you know that time is dedicated to building my body up to um being you know elite right and so, for example, like on this team, um, I'm the second oldest guy on the team, but I have the lowest body fat on the team. Um, you know, it's just like making sure that, you know, I continue to, uh, you know, try and push myself to be elite in every single way um, so that every single year I have to reprove myself and, and prove that I deserve my spot over that young guy. And uh, and so I have to continue to, to reinvent myself and and be flexible. Well, mm. that's that's incredible. So so walk me through a little bit about how you actually do that. Like tactically speaking, you know, what's your, you 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 mentioned the discipline is one of your your strong suits. What do you mean? Break that down for us. Did did you always have that or is that something you developed or when did you decide you need to develop? Just break that down, man. Yeah, I mean, I think it's something I've I've always had um a certain amount of it, you know, innate. Like just kind of like that's been who I've been since I was um, a kid, you know, I would be the kid that, you know, my mom would have to come outside and say, what are you doing? Like, you, we're about to eat dinner. You got to come inside. You can't shoot. You can't shoot all day long, right? You can't, <laughs> you know, at the YMCA, you can't play one-on-one, -on -one, you know, from nine in the morning till nine at night and, you know, not every day, right? Like you have to, you have to do other things, right? So I've always had a, a, a work ethic and wanting to get better and kind of an obsession with the game. And, uh, with the process and so for me it's just always been about um you know making sure that i'm <clears throat> uh doing I'm, i've never had an issue with doing enough actually sometimes i do too much <laughs> you know so for me it's always been about uh you know making sure that i uh i hone in uh, on you know the amount of time i'm putting into my craft and uh allow you know my body to rest and, and everything else. As, as I've gotten older, it's gotten even more important to be, you know, work smarter, not harder. Uh, it kind of, you know, as I've gotten older, it's kind of become my, my motto. So you just, oh, go ahead. 
Well, you're good. You're good. You're good. So you just basically learned your body, learned your schedule, and then just you know scheduled it in, or, or how do you walk me through like what's the life of an NBA player yeah. during off season? Is it get up at seven a.m. and and have a good meal and then work out and then rest? What what what's that look like, buddy? Yeah. So for me, um, you know, this off season was a little bit different. Uh, I was very blessed and fortunate to be able to uh, build like my dream house, and my dream house includes. Uh, a gym in my backyard, like an indoor half court gym. So um, I didn't have to go very far to work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's it awesome. To, it used to be a commute, and then now it was just roll out of my bed and go to work. So, um, so yeah, this past summer, um, it was every day, uh, seven seven o'clock. I would be in the gym uh, doing strength and conditioning work with my uh, strength and conditioning coach. And, uh, you know, we would finish that in about an hour and a half, two hours. And then um, right after that, I'd literally get a snack and then go right back into the gym and uh, be doing uh, basketball work with my personal trainer um, in basketball. And we'd do that for about an hour and a half. And uh, then I'd be kind of done for the day and be able to go hang out with the kids, jump in the pool, and, uh, you know, hang out with the wife. And so uh, that was kind of, that was my, my deal all summer. And then, you know, as I've gotten older, you know, continuing to do other things like, you know, uh, body work, like massage therapy or yoga or whatever it may be, all that different type of stuff all comes into play as well. So just continuing to, you know, just, you know, listen to my body. And, but, but for me, it's about consistency. And it was literally just every day. It wasn't uh, Monday through Friday. It would be every Every weekday on the weekends, I'd usually, you know, uh, you know, give myself a little bit of a break. But either Saturday or Sunday, I would, I would still be in the gym, you know, doing something. But uh, it wouldn't be a full day uh, of work. But yeah, man, it's uh, definitely a full-time job. And you know, to add on to that, uh, you know, I would fast. So in the morning, I would always fast, and so it would be, it, I would go through all these workouts, but I would have nothing in my in my stomach. And people think. Some people might think that's crazy, but um, it actually was, um, you know, one of the best things that you know, I did all summer was just fast and uh, learn how to, you know, mentally get through whenever your, you know, body is is yearning for food and stuff like that. And um, it also allowed my body to adjust and, and, and really, uh, you know, get better. Hmm. That's that's where I was going to go. I was going to go daily routine. I was going to go food. I was going to go all that. Like literally that was, you just answered several questions. So that's great. So NBA player, father of four business, uh, aficionado mogul mogul does it all. Um, so how, since you're one of the rare individuals that's very successful in both, you know, athletics and business, what kind of overlaps have you seen Mm. in the athletic, you know, uh, arena of your life along with the business arena of your life because i know you roll around in some circles that are super successful businessmen and you know what it's like to be around guys that have you know achieved the highest level of business success along with the highest level of athletic success what are some common denominators that you see between those two groups Mm. um you know i might sound like a broken record today uh but uh it, there really is no secret. Uh, that's uh, that's that's actually the one thing that I've learned is that if you surround yourself with great people, um, you know whether that's in business or in, even in sports or entertainment. I mean, if you are if you're a team, if you have a great team around you, that support system and all, all that stuff, uh, that's going to set you up for the the highest level you can get to. Um, and um, and nothing replaces just work. I mean, nobody, there's not one ultra successful person I've, I've met in basketball or in business that was just like, yeah, I just woke up one day and I was one of the greatest <laughs> of all time. You know, it's just, <laughs> it doesn't really work like that. Uh, no. You know, there's in basketball, basketball is a little bit different because in basketball, there are some God gifted, naturally more talented people, right? Um, but in order, the only reason why LeBron James is LeBron James is not because just because of his God-given talent. It's because of his work ethic as well. Um, same thing with Michael Jordan. Same thing with Kobe Bryant. 
um, you know, the best of the best are always the hardest workers as well. And so, yes, they were absolutely blessed with some unbelievable natural talent, but uh, they took that and then they molded it into becoming literally a goat, right? And so um, <clears throat> for me, uh, that's what I've seen in businesses. There's just not anything that can replace work, um, you know, working for what you want and, uh, and surrounding yourself with great people. Um, it's going to be, you know, it's kind of like the secret sauce. That, I mean, that's it. <laughs> it's absolutely, uh, that's going to be the best chance of you being successful. That's awesome, man. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it is really is that simple, man. It's, it's funny how we get all these successful people around, uh, you know, and just talking and everyone's like, man, it's just work ethic, dude. It's work. It, it's surround yourself with good people. Like yeah, you said, yeah, it's, you know, yeah, go, it's, yeah, it's yeah. being consistent. It's the routine. It's all that stuff. You know, you working smarter, not harder. But like, I also feel like when you work harder, you're naturally going to find your way. You know what I'm saying? The more, the more times you're swinging for the fence, the more time you're going to hit. Um, so, you know, how have you personally, you know, you went to Creighton university, you're, you know, very good player in college, but by no means like a top, you know, uh, you know, college in the nation, right? It was Creighton in the Missouri Valley. Not that they weren't any good. You did great. I think you guys went to the tournament a couple of years, right? Yeah. It went to the tournament a couple of times. I mean, it, at the time it was a mid major, uh, now they're in the big East. So it's, uh, you know, a bigger, you know, quote unquote, you know, bigger conference and stuff like that. But, you know, it's, uh, it, it was at the time it was definitely a mid major, uh, pretty small school. Then you went overseas for a couple of years and then you made it to the NBA. Was there something that, that you, tr that triggered in your mind? What, walk me through, was it, was there a mental switch that you made when you were a young man in the D league or whatever that said, you know what, if I just do this, I'll get to the NBA and mm -hmm. then did it. Or was it just, you just developed as a player? Why, why walk me through that journey in those early years of, of becoming a player that was now entitled to be an NBA you know, veteran for uh, 14 years? Uh, yeah, I mean, so, you know, playing in the, in the D league, also playing overseas, um, allowed me to have a different perspective on just the appreciation of this, this, this level and this league and, and, um, you know, it, having to do your own laundry, you know, not having, uh, a practice facility, you know, just, there's a, a million little things that you just don't think about uh, that, you know, that, you know, when you don't have it, you're like, oh, wow, like, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, for me, uh, you know, playing overseas and, and then playing in the D League, uh, it helped to develop a, a toughness about me uh, to be able to develop a, a way of just not complaining uh, because it could always be worse. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys who have never known anything but luxury and nothing but, you know, going to Kentucky for one year, then they're drafted in the first round and been with one team their whole career, right? And you do that, and it's like, all right, well, that's that's not very much adversity. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's hard for them to have a perspective like I do of, of appreciation. And so for me, that was the biggest thing I took away uh, from, you know, the times that I spent in Germany and Turkey and, and Iowa and Idaho were, you know, hey, stop complaining, work your tail off, um, just do what you're supposed to do and help your team win and things will work out for you. And, you know, that's kind of been my motto. Yep. Uh, jumping into Jumping, jumping into business, you talked about business a little bit earlier. You got, you know, part of several companies. You got a lot going on. Um, if you had, if, if you could have dinner with one person in the business world, who would that be and why? I'm putting mm. you on the spot. Like current or past, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's a really good question. Uh and it could be it, it could be current either way. Yeah, um, you know, I might I might say someone like uh, a Junior Bridgman. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who that is. Um, he is uh, he played about twelve or thirteen years in the NBA. Um, he was 
you know, I think he might have been all star once, once or twice. I mean, he was a good player. Um, but in his career, he played back in like the 70s and 80s, I believe. And I think in his career, he might have made uh, a couple million bucks, you know, two, three, four, five million bucks. I don't know. Not much, right? Like comparatively, right? Uh, but um, he had about, I think at the end of his career, he had saved up a million dollars. And he turned that into a, I think about a $400 million um, franchise, uh, you know, like whatever you want to call it, empire, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, restaurants and all kinds of different stuff. And now he actually, he passed that stuff along to his kids. And now he is running a distribution center for Coca-Cola in the Midwest. So, I mean, the guy is uh, absolutely a monster and uh, he's come, you know, come from a very similar background as me, uh, as, you know, turned into a, a massive, massive company and, uh, turned into an un- unbelievable uh, opportunity with Coca-Cola, which I think he's one of two individuals in the country um, that have uh, control over a distribution center. So um, it is it is a, a awesome, awesome story. I've talked to him on the phone a couple of times, but, you know, having lunch with that guy, I think would be really, really cool and uh, to hear his story and to hear all the, you know, the things that he's brought to the table, I think it'd be amazing. Wow. That's right awesome. No, that's, that's good, good man. man. Great, great answer. That's awesome. That's really cool. I'm, I'm going to look him up. That, that's great. So, um, you know, w- w- you got, you see, you've seen a lot of players come and go. What, what is it? I mean, besides work ethic, obviously when someone just doesn't work hard, they're probably not going to work out, but what, what's something that you can spot on a new guy coming in the NBA that you're like, that, that guy ain't going to last. Like mm. what, what is that? Like what's the telltale He's gonna he's gonna turn over and, and not really do much, or, or do you not want to say, or is that an okay question? No, it's totally fine. Uh, attitude, uh, literally, uh, a, a kid a kid's attitude, a person's attitude, um, just a daily um, attitude uh, tells me almost everything I need to know. Um, you know, not not to you know not to complain here and there, or or not to be, uh, you know, not even about necessarily being like a super likable person but being likable always helps don't get me wrong um but just like if they have a a a poor attitude uh that almost certainly that kid uh that person's going to be out of this league shortly Uh, now if they're ultra talented that'll extend it uh, a little bit longer but uh, you know as you get older and as you get uh, longer in this career like the only reason why only reasons why guys make it as long as they do um, is because teams look at, you know, guys and say they bring added value beyond just the court. And that a lot of that is geared towards the right attitudes. So for me, um, you know, and this is really applied to every, every industry probably in the world is, is, you know, with the right attitude. Um, and, you know, we talked about work ethic, but just if you have the right attitude, uh, you can just achieve so much more than you can with a with a with a bad poor attitude. It's good. I didn't think he was gonna say that. No, I didn't either. I didn't know what you're gonna say, but that's, yeah. I, I love that answer. I love All right, that man. Answer. Well, um, you know what, what? You know, your 14 years in the NBA career. What's like some the biggest pieces of wisdom that you've picked up that you're gonna say? You know, to your son one day. You know what? When I was in the NBA, I learned this one principle, and it and it it changed my life. Like what, what kind of wisdom do you have that you've picked up that really, I would say that maybe only an NBA player could pick up. Like, is there any, is there, have you ever thought about that? Is there any nuggets of Uh, wisdom? I mean, I would say the number one thing that I've picked up from this experience is that um, the NBA is a business first. um, And it is uh, the way it, the way it is run, the way it flows, everything about it is about the business. And it's, uh, you know, it can, it can be a good thing, but also it can be a bad thing. Um, so, you know, sometimes, um, you know, in the past, I've been released or whatever from teams like early in my career because of a business decision, right? And, um, and so learning how to, 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 to deal with adversity um, 
whenever you literally did everything that you possibly could do and you did your job and you still were, uh, you know, released or cut or, you know, had to go through um, that adversity. Um, it, it was such a great learning tool for me uh, and to learn about the business of basketball. And then, you know, outside of that, I mean, you know, teaching my kids, it's like, yo, sometimes you can do everything possible the right way and it still doesn't work out for you, right? Um, that's just part of life. That's unfortunately, um, you know, NBA is not the only um, thing that's run you know, business first, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of industries that are the exact same way. So, um, you know, so for me, I think that would be the biggest thing I would take away. And, uh, or one of the biggest things I have taken away is just how, you know, how is the business first and how sometimes, you know, given even your best effort, uh, sometimes it's not going to work out for you, but it doesn't keep you from, you know, putting that best foot forward. It's good. It's good. This guy has some good, good. I told you, be good, dude. Really, really good. Uh, I mean, the only thing I, else I can think of is like, you probably already know the answer to this too, because you're already you know doing some business stuff. Um, is there a certain industry that you're just natu- outside of you know sports and the NBA? Is there like another industry or business world that you're like just naturally drawn to, and you can just feel it and already tell, and maybe you're already going that direction? You say, is there another business uh, area that what? I'm sorry. Yeah, like a certain industry. Like yeah, certain industry or business area that you're just like naturally drawn towards, or that you enjoy talking about, or enjoy being in. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, my number one thing outside of MBA is is real estate. Um, absolutely. I mean, that was the first thing I did with my first chunk of money that I was able to save up with just buying an investment property. Um, I didn't even buy it very well. Uh, I kind of probably, I probably overpaid for it. But uh, <laughs> I felt like it was just uh, it was just something I you know it's something I've been you know learning about you know uh, uh, reading about for for a long time and I just like you know what it's time it's time to to jump in and so uh, but yeah real estate is something that gets me really excited um, you know it's something that I'll almost certainly do um, quite a bit of whenever I'm done playing basketball uh, on top of uh, you know, kind of, I would say secondary to, to real estate would be just, uh, startups, you know, our entrepreneurship, just, you know, literally sitting around the table, me, you and Landon, uh, you know, coming up with an idea and saying, all right, let's go do it. Right. And just, and actually going and doing it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm an executor. I'm a doer. I'm a guy that, you know, wants to not just talk about something. Let's just actually. So, yeah, that's what I would say it would be, you know, kind of my two things outside of real estate or outside of basketball is real estate and, and startup entrepreneurship. Take right action. On, yeah, Executor. Dude. That's good. Well, and he's always been, you know, so supportive. Like there's a group of us that all played ball together. Um, and we all actually own businesses. So when we get together, like, you know, me and him and Kelly and Ralph and Spence and all these guys, we all get together and have so much fun because we're all entrepreneurs. Like, his business partner is a good friend of mine, Kelly. And then Ralph is a business partner of his, is a friend of mine. And we all, it's just a lot of fun. Cause we, you know, we get around the table and we just kind of, we're all kind of doing our different things. Like one of our friends owns a, uh, a fishing company who he helps with and real estate and I'm doing marketing and it's a, it's a fun group, man. That's awesome. Um, well, Hey, before you get going, I, I, I want to be respectful of your time. So just give me like a wink if you need to go or whatever, if they're calling you up to the front, but I'd love to get, um, just some like fun questions out of the way that only an N- NBA insider, would kind of be able to to have some insight on. So, like, would you be willing to say, like, who who is, like, a couple players that come to mind when it comes to, like, the biggest trash talker or the guy that, like, <laughs> you know, is just like, oh, my gosh, this guy's running his mouth again. Like, who is that on the court, man, that everybody knows? Uh, Patrick Beverly, for sure, from the <laughs> Super. I mean, he's, he's – he might be the most annoying – guy uh in the, in the nba but he's the guy that everybody wants on the team uh totally everybody like uh, absolutely i mean he plays his heart out um his defense is tremendous uh he just does everything the right way um but i'll tell you one thing whenever he's when you're playing against him 
going to talk all kinds of trash and he's going to make you work for everything you get. So um, he's probably number one right now. Uh, Draymond Green is, is, is a pretty good trash talker too. He never really talks to me though. I don't know. I don't know if it's because I never respond or what. I don't, I don't really talk at all like to other, to the other team. Uh, that's just never been me at all. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I would say Patrick Beverly is number one. Right on. Well, that's on, cool. That's on, such a funny on question. The, uh, on the flip side, um, you know, you you've you've mentioned to me a, a couple players that just are unguardable. Um, you know, who who do you feel like is like some of the players that just have such a talent on the offensive end that you just, I mean, it's almost like good grief. Like I'm gonna try to hold this guy to 35. Like you know what I mean? Like who are those kind of players to you and your personal sort of? Yeah. Uh, number one, Kevin Durant. Uh, number two, Anthony Davis. Um, and yeah, I mean, those two kind of are above and beyond. Uh, I mean, just, you know, they're both almost seven foot long, athletic, can shoot, can dribble, can post up. I mean, they can kind of do a little bit of everything. Uh, I would say everybody else, even like a LeBron, I mean, he's, he's dominant in so many different ways, but. You know, he's not just a dominant scorer, whereas, you know, Kevin Durant, that's that's what he does. So I would say that that's number one. Right on, man. Hmm. Um, what is um, – if you had to pick uh, a starting five from from the uh, from the whole NBA, leaving your teammates, Portland Trailblazers, out of the question so you don't make anybody mad, who would you, uh, who would you pick as your starting five? And this isn't all time. This is current NBA players, not all time. Uh, current. Um, yeah, current. You say not not my teammates. Not your teammates. They're off. They're off the. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to make anybody mad. They're okay. out of the game. Uh, I would say uh, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, uh, Steph Curry. Mm. Uh, Kevin Durant and ooh, maybe throw in uh, Giannis onto the Kimbo. Yeah, makes sense. Have you played against Giannis? Oh, you played against Giannis. You saw his block against Giannis. I did right? see the block. <laughs> Dude. I <did> see that. <laughs> when I saw that, I couldn't even believe it. I, in fact, uh, uh, Dylan, you got to throw a clip of that block on this podcast during this this interview because he just stops. You know, it, uh, that it was uh, amazing. Um, well, hey, so um, is there anything else? Like, do you have a couple stories before you get going? Like one story that's like, you know what, this is hilarious that happened in the NBA or this happened in the locker room or something that would just kind of like. I don't know, light, lighten the lighten the conversation a little bit on on just something funny or cool or whatever that happened to you in the last fourteen years in the NBA. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, there's <laughs> there's a really funny story about one of my ex teammates. I don't want to say any names, but uh, <laughs> um, he uh, he got he got upset with me for uh, for uh, you know directing right for for telling him what to do I guess and um he didn't really like that and uh and told me not to talk to him anymore I said okay no problem I won't talk to you anymore and so I uh actually you know played the rest of practice did really well and uh made a couple shots and and for some reason that made him really mad and uh he uh threw the ball and walked out of practice and so (laughs) um yeah, I'm not gonna say any names or anything like that, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, you just never know. You never know with uh, an NBA. It's uh, you know the types of personalities you're gonna have and types of things you're gonna have to deal with. It's uh, I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna write a book uh, when it's all said and done. Um, to, it's not gonna be a tell-all book because I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna still try and stay away from from naming a bunch of names for for certain stories, but. Uh, but man, it's uh, it, there's a lot of material there. That's good. I would love that. That's awesome. Well, I'm in, man. I'll buy your first copy, dude. Send it my way. Um, is there anything else you want to maybe talk through that you have the stage? You know, this is going to be seen by thousands of 
young business professionals, business executives, any, anything, you know, you want to say to the group before we, we kind of head out? You know, honestly, uh, like I said, uh, I wouldn't say there would be anything like, I don't have any, you know, secret, um, secret sauce or anything. Uh, it would just be, you know, to continue to work, um, continue to put yourself in a position to be successful, um, allow everything else to work itself out and, um, and control the things you can control. Um, I think a lot of people take too much time, um, spend too much time trying to control things that they have no control over and it really can drive you crazy. So control the things you can control, uh, and, um, you know, allow everything else to, to fall into place and, you know, and, and, and don't, don't, uh, allow other people's, uh, you know, opinions of me, of you, uh, determine yourself, your self worth and, and what you think about yourself. Um, if that was the case, I would have never made it to the highest level, never made it to the NBA because that was, uh, that was not something that was supposed to be a part of my, my, uh, my life and what everybody else thought was, it was not going to ever happen. But, you know, for me, uh, you know, I just never let that the negative noise uh, affect uh, my outcome. Right on, man. Dude. Good dude. Incredible. Thank you so much for being on. Yeah, buddy. man, Seriously. we appreciate you very much. I know you have four children and NBA careers, successful businesses, and you're fixing your, your windshield while you're on the podcast. So, <laughs> you know, you're a master of time management. So I appreciate no your time, buddy. Next time you're in Springfield, hit me up, man. We'll all get together or, or we'll figure something out. Sounds good. Absolutely. All right. Thanks for joining us, man. It's been an honor, bro. Thank you, buddy. Absolutely. All right. See ya.